Terminal velocity is the speed at which an object stops accelerating. Okay, one more time. Terminal velocity is the speed at which an object no longer accelerates. Well, take Parachute Bob here for example. As Parachute Bob jumps out of the airplane, gravity immediately grabs onto him and accelerates him at 9.8 meters per second squared. Now, in a vacuum after one second, that would mean that Bob's speed is about 10 meters per second. And after two seconds in a vacuum, his speed would be about 20 meters per second. But that's just the case. You can't parachute or skydive, really, in a vacuum. We do this in air. Well, the consequence of air is quite significant, actually. As Bob jumps out of a plane in air, gravity accelerates him at 9.8 meters per second squared. But as he speeds up, his body continually pounds the air in front of him. This pounding of air creates a frictional force that we call drag. When we consider the question, which object will hit first, one that has two times the mass than the, than the other one, which one will hit the ground first, that is a question of which one reaches its terminal velocity the quickest, or which one approaches their terminal velocity first. Well, we've defined everything that has to be defined relative to understanding what terminal velocity is, but, but at what point? How does one describe an object's terminal velocity? Well, an object's terminal velocity is determined by the consideration of when the drag force equals the weight of the object. So let's look at that a bit more closely. When we have the drag equaling the weight of the object, then what we're saying is that drag, from our previous definition of drag, being expressed as k a v squared, is equal to the weight of the object. OK. Well, the terminal velocity then is solving for the V. So we're solving for V. By doing this, we can see that V is equal to the square root of the weight of the object divided by Ka. Now remember what K is. K is the drag coefficient. And there's a lot of effects that go into it, or a lot of factors that go into determining this. Also, the cross-sectional area of the object could change. So we pay attention to that. And this is, of course, the weight. But this expression right here is terminal velocity. This is how we determine the magnitude of the terminal velocity. OK, so if we want to consider the who's going to hit first question, of these two objects, you can see that we're going to have to address who reaches terminal velocity first. So check this out. Just, just watch. Let me drop these objects for you. You're going to be able to see something here. Okay, watch this. I have two times the objects and one of the masses here. Ready? I'll drop on three. One, two, three. Did you see that? Did you see who hit first? Yeah, neither did I. The reason was these objects, regardless of the fact that this is two times more massive, neither of the objects was being influenced by air such that the drag was great enough compared to the weight to start affecting the acceleration. But let's look more closely from a mathematical point of view, and then we'll come back to this picture. Now, ultimately, the answer to the question is, to, or excuse me, the answer to the question of who's going to hit the ground first, the answer is whoever reaches their terminal velocity second. The person or the skydiver who reaches their terminal velocity first will no longer accelerate, allowing the person who hasn't quite reached their terminal velocity to pass them in that process. So let's look more closely at terminal velocity. 
let's consider two times the weight, which will be the two skydivers, okay? The weight of, they're all the same, different colors, okay? The same weight, so one MA sub G compared to two MA sub G. Here's one MA sub G. Okay, now the terminal velocity for this group is determined by the square root of MA sub G divided by KA. Okay, we want to focus on terminal velocity, so let's have a good experiment here and create some quality, or identify rather, some quality constants and controls. Our control is going to be the single. We're going to see relative to the single who hits first. Our constants will be they are the same object with the same mass. This one has two times uh, the skydiver, so two times the mass. They both will be dropped in the same orientation, thus keeping the cross-sectional area the same. Both of the groups will be dropped in the same environmental conditions, from rest, in the same air, at the same altitude, at the same temperature, and we're not going to dress one group in a fuzzy uniform compared to the other group. So we're keeping this K and A constant. So as we look at the terminal velocity here, we can see that the only thing that's being affected here is the object's weight. This, the object's weight is what's going to determine the terminal velocity as being indifferent from the other one. So the terminal velocity in this case will be two times this quantity, whereas the terminal velocity of the singleton will simply be Ka1 times that quantity. So as we boil it down here, we can communicate that the terminal velocity will be the square root of all of this stuff because it all remains constant. Whereas the terminal velocity over here will simply be the square root of 1 times the weight divided by Ka. So you can see that the group of two will have a larger terminal velocity in comparison to this group over here. Now the absolute numerical magnitude, you would have to determine that, you would have to know all of these values. But that's not what we're focusing on right now. We're focusing on the conceptual fact that if these terms remain constant, then it's the weight that governs the object. And that is what happens more often in the situations that you put in question. Which object will be hitting the ground first? Well, this object of two has a higher terminal velocity than the singleton. That means that as each of them fall, this guy having a lighter weight will reach the drag force required to stop accelerating it sooner than this group of two. Now, it's not that this group of two is, is, has a greater, it's not that this group of two has a greater force acting on it, because it doesn't. It has a, it hasn't reached a drag force proportional to its weight yet, and therefore passes the singleton. Now, it too will reach a terminal velocity. And after each of them has reached their terminal velocity, you will see that the distance between the two as they fall no longer increases. But by the time this singleton has reached his terminal velocity, these two haven't yet, and that's the reason why it passes. So the group of two will hit the ground first. But it's not because it's not directly because of their weight. It's not directly, it's not just because they weigh more. It's because their terminal velocity is determined by the drag force, the drag force 
reaching or becoming proportional to their weight. So the heavier the object, the greater the drag force that's required to slow it down or stop accelerating. And that generally means that it's going to have a higher terminal velocity. And that generally means that, yes, heavier objects hit the ground first. 